just refreshing Twitter here to see if no Rick Rick Talk it's still the coach still the coach so uh, hello everyone welcome to 996 the howl for the uninitiated unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes 30 games uh, it feels like a week went by since I made a video like this at uh, 21 games but it's been nine games it's been a rough nine games. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, what was bad at the 21st game mark is worse. At the 30 game mark, 12 wins, 13 losses, five extra time losses, sixth in the West, one point behind the LA Kings, which we all thought would have a struggling year. They might still struggle near the end, but they're playing well. Uh, the LA Kings are obviously. Points percentage was down. Um, from their 21 game mark. They're down to 48.3%, six in the West. Their goals four is almost dead last. at 2.33 goals per game, down tremendously from their 21st game mark, which had a 2.57 goals four per game. Goals against has increased every, as the season went along, the, as the season goes along, the goals against has increased to 2.97 goals against per game, which that's three goals against per game. Very uncharacteristic of the Arizona Coyotes and the defensive system. Talk it likes to praise so much. Power play in the dumps just last night. You, oh, they're 0-15 on the power play in their last 15 attempts. Zero power play goals in the last five games. It's down to 17.5%, which is sixth in the West. It would used to be hovering around 19, 19.5, but lately it's just been down in the dumps. Their PK has increased a little bit. It's back up to 83.5%, but it's still only sixth in the division. There's a lot of good penalty killing in the West division. Uh, that's probably due to the terrible power plays in Minnesota and Anaheim. And you can throw in the Coyotes there as well. Save percentage, which I was harping on since the beginning of the season, it's at their highest mark. It's finally up to 90.6%, up from 90.2%. It's still low, still below average across the league. Uh, I'm assuming that Ranta performance and a couple Aiden Hill performances really helped increase their save percentage. So it's good to see the save percentage increase. Um, we could all basically say goaltending is not really a problem it's just a goal scoring offensive pressure offensive momentum and offensive possession their possession numbers is down to 47.2 percent down from 48.6 percent from the 21st game mark and when you see uh the possession numbers below 50 percent it's bad and that means the opposition is controlling the puck more than you are just for comparison's sake, the Colorado Avalanche have a 58% possession number. They love to possess the puck. We all know that. They play the whole game, it seems like, in the opposing end zone. Uh, going to the players, um, <laughs> if you want to guess who the next player is in, t in terms of total points, it's Jordan o Osterley. Uh, Jordan Osterley. Osterley. Uh, is the next player up in terms of total points. So you got Garland, nine goals, 15 points, 24 points. In 30 games, he missed, in 29 games, so he missed one game. He scored yesterday against Anaheim. Good to see him get off the schneid. Before that goal, Garland had two goals in 14 games, which is bad. Now he's up to three and 15. Rick Tockett decided to put together that short leash line yesterday against Anaheim. No idea why he ever broke them apart. Um, you want to give your best offensive players the best offensive opportunities. And Keller, Schmaltz, and Garland is your best offensive line. Just do it every night. Not sure why he broke them up for a period of games. It seemed like probably 10 games he refused to put that line together throughout a whole game. There was glimpses here and there of during a game he might try them for a shift or two. But for a consistent game for a full 60, it was a long time since the short leash line was put together and they got two goals. So it would have been nice to get some depth scoring. We'll talk about that here as well. Um, Kraus, 
still only one goal. Christian Fisher, no goals. Ekman Larson, no goals. Kologovsky, no goals. Demers, no goals. Um, that's really bad for depth, and these guys are known to score at least a few goals. But now you're 30 games in, and those players have no goals or very low goal totals like Kraus. Um, it's abysmal. Their depth is letting them down, but their star players have a, a real consistency issue, a real offensive just morale issue and offensive confidence issue, which I would say is due to their uh, play style and coaching style and coaching systems. I mean, if you look at the droughts these players have had, I mentioned in my last video, but Dvorak has two goals in 18 games. Schmaltz has two goals in 18 games. That can never happen. These are your star players. They have the talent. They were point per game players about 10, 12 games ago. And then I don't know what happened since then where now they're not point per game players or in massive droughts. They, they have no offensive confidence. Um, as a team, they only have four goals in their last five games. So they're in their last five games are averaging less than a goal per game. Some things I give um, that that cannot happen. These players are frustrated, they're stressed out. Um, they want to score. It felt like they were going to score a lot yesterday against Anaheim, but after those two quick goals in the first period, the offense kind of just died. Power play wasn't helping at all. So much perimeter passing and perimeter shooting and shooting into opposing bodies. So. I mean, that's basically it. There's not much. There's going to be a short review, short analysis one, I guess. Um, the, in terms of Rick talking, I'm sure I'll make a video more detailing why he should be let go. There's, I don't even think there's any pros to let him stay on the bench. I mean, we're not asking the ownership to pay for a new coach. Like, his contract is up in the summer. We don't want a new coach right now. You can hire someone in the summer like you were going to anyways when Tockett's extension was up or just contract was up. Um, you could have Jay Verity, who's an assistant right now, who coached the Tucson Roadrunners last season. He could just step in as an interim coach, see what happens, see how the players respond. Just send a message to the fan base that losing like this cannot happen anymore. We saw it with Buffalo, where finally, after 12 straight losses, they finally pulled the plug, and they still owed Ralph Kruger another year. So, Rick there's no more years left. There's 26 games left on his contract, so I would just let him out early, see how players respond, send a message to the team, to the fan base, and get going on hiring a coach, have conversations with coaches, Bruce Boudreau, Gerard Gallant, Mike Babcock. They're not employed. They're good coaches with good regular season numbers. So maybe one of them could get a spark on the team uh, next season. So that's it, that's it basically. Um, power play is in the dumps. Not sure what happens there. I don't even know who's in charge of the power play. And maybe Phil Housley. Um, talking about other teams in the league. Montreal fired their coach. Calgary fired their coach. Uh, the Rangers their coach was in COVID protocol and all their coaching staff was. So they brought up their whole American League coaching staff to coach a game and they won nine nothing against the Philadelphia Flyers. So just a change or something just to get out of this groove that the players groove or rut that the players find themselves in and the team find themselves in. Um, they really need something here. Um, obviously playoffs is probably out of the conversation but just some hope and some juice and some new, just some newness on the team would be beneficial. It wouldn't be detrimental to the team at all. They're probably going to look at selling players after next week's results. So they got Colorado twice next week, so I'm sure that'll be a bloodbath. They just destroyed the Minnesota Wild. Uh, I believe they're like out shooting them 22 to two. The Avalanche were last night. So the Avalanche top team, they're finally getting their groove. They're going to surpass the night sooner or later and hit that top seed in the West like I predicted. So that's it for me. I would really hope a change. Um, they signed a Russian defenseman. I don't know when he's going to play. He'll probably have to quarantine. Maybe he just comes in next season. But that's probably a signal that they're going to trade a defenseman 
And if they do, maybe this new guy could slot in as a just a s- s- placeholder until the off season. Uh, we'll see what these guys are valued at. Uh, maybe Bill Arfa could get some good value for some of these players. I'm sure I'll make a trade bay video as well. So I'll delve into the into that um, later. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word, and thank you for your support.